hi guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm gonna be doing a story time um probably by the title that you guys read i'm gonna be talking about the first time i got in a car accident and if it was brujeria okay and if you guys do hear noises my daughter is right under me so um she's just playing around with her all her toys and yeah so i remember i had a little ford escape i forgot what year it was because it's been so long but yes, I had a little gray Ford Escape that my dad gave me for my graduation. When I graduated, I was in love with this car, guys. This car saved me gas. This car was so good in the snow. This car got me from point A to point B. It had a sound system. Um, just what I wanted, you know, just to get to work and everything. I remember around that time, I was going to school for medical assisting. So then, um, I remember that I was at the store um i was buying some groceries for my mom and there was a guy that came up to me i don't know who this guy was you know he just came up to me and said hey they put burujeri on you so um before i jump into conclusion i was with somebody and you know there was some problems and i'll make a separate story time from that one but um yeah there were some problems that we had prior to us being together and then we broke up and his family just hated me they had such a rage on me um i didn't do anything to this family i didn't you know but they hated me and you know how mexicans are luego luego van con los brujos y te empiezan a echar brujería so i knew you know i knew some way or somehow that was true but i didn't want to believe it so i just i told the guy i was like oh i was like pues de que está hablando y she's like si te echaron la brujería pa que te accidentes I was like, what the hell? I was like, that's not true. I was like, who would like do such a thing, you know? So I remember, you know, I grabbed all the stuff that I needed and I texted my friend that day, um, call her Glenda. So yeah, I told Glenda, hey, you should come over, you know, we should have a little sleepover. And um, Glenda uh, had, a, had a kid at the time. Well, she still does, but she has a, you know, she's like, yeah, let me just ask my mom, see if she can take care of my baby, and then I'll head over there, you know, I was like, okay, and then um, she was like, hey, um, she lived like 30 minutes away from me, so at last she was like, do you think you can pick me up, dude, and then I'll go with you and we can have our sleepover, I was like, yeah, you know, just make sure you bring some money, because I do have some stuff planned for us to do, she's like, okay, so I went all the way over there to go pick her up in Thornton, and we came back. So we were getting ready and I remember that night we were going to the movie I can only imagine just um, appear like just started going into the movie theater. So I was like, why don't we go eat tacos at this place here in Longmont and then we'll go ahead and go to the movie theater. She was like, yeah, sure. So I remember we were getting ready and everything and I had like a feeling in my gut that something was gonna happen just because this person told me this you know I'm like how does this person know me how does this person know that this was gonna happen to me how does this person know you know what's going on with me when I'm battling right now you know with this person that hurt me how you know so I told my friend I was like you know today I went to the store and some random guy came up to me and told me that something was gonna happen to me and I don't believe it she's like no nah, I don't believe it you know it's not gonna happen I was like all right so I remember, you know, I told her, okay, you know, I'm ready. So I didn't have Aliana at the time. Single and I didn't have Aliana, you know. And I was trying to get myself back together because, like I said, I barely got a, a relationship. This relationship was very abusive. So I remember I was just trying to get out of my comfort zone. And, you know, that's why I invited my friend over so we can go ahead and go out and go eat and go to the movies. So she's like you know what don't believe it you know people are just trying to get at you you know people are just trying to bring you down and i was like yeah you're right so i remember you know i told my mom hey you know i'm gonna go to the movie theater she was still up she was you know already in her pjs it was already night y me dijo, no, pues ten mucho cuidado, mija, que te bendiga Dios, me con cuidado. i was like all right mom so you know how they say the myth that when you have a car accident it literally happens like minutes away from your house this accident happened literally like three minutes away from my house so i remember i was driving and i i forgot what song me and my friend were hearing but era una canción reggaeton that we were listening to driving all the way over there and i remember you know i was happy you know because it was like probably my first time coming out of the house y todo, and i was i was happy 
so i was driving and the speed limit was 45 you know i loved driving fast at that time a mí me encantaba pisar en la gas a mí no me importaba <laughs> a mí no me importaba manejar rápido so i remember you know le estaba pisando i am gonna say i was and then when i was coming up to the light so so i was going this way right i was going straight so this is me i was going straight and there was cars turning this way so i remember as i was going um the light turned yellow so i remember i was going really fast just to pass that light i know i'm not the only one that does that i know a lot of people go fast to pass that yellow light so i remember i was like le voy a pisar para, para irme al yellow light so when i was going there was this car that was turning and i was like what the hell so it like i it turned really quick and then the other car i think it didn't see if i was coming or not and it went and when it went we both hit and i just remember i felt the car like it hit my side it didn't hit her side it hit my side and i just felt the car go back i was just still holding on to the steering wheel i was holding on to my dear life and i just i went out for like a minute i just i remember hearing everybody scream i remember hearing the other people like what the f like oh my god like my car and then that's when i i like reaccioné. i was like like que paso que paso you know so i remember my friend she right away got out of the car porque she saw the smoke coming out of the hood and she's like the car's gonna explode judith you need to get out um you need to get out like the car's gonna explode and i couldn't get out guys i was stuck i was stuck from the hit that i got the whole steering wheel came up and i was stuck i was literally stuck there so i was like i'm stuck i'm stuck i can't get out i can't get out please help me please help me and literally guys the ambulance were right there the ambulance were right there at that cross light so the second they saw the car accident boom they got right there like i didn't even have to wait or anything and um i remember my friend got out of the car and I couldn't get out. I was crying because I couldn't get out. And I grabbed my phone and I called my mom. I was like, I'm a, she's like, get me her, me accidente. She's like, que, como que te accidentaste? I was like, my mom, I'm fine. I'm like, I can't get out of the car. The ambulance are here. She's like, she's like, ay voy, ay voy, mija, ay voy, esperame, esperame, esperame. So I remember, you know, it took them a while to get me out out of the vehicle it took them like about 10 minutes to get me out because i was really stuck in there i remember when i got out i was crying because i couldn't breathe because the moment the airbag shut up and hit me um they hit my chest and i just i couldn't breathe i was having a very difficult time breathing and i kept telling them i can't breathe i can't breathe please help me you know and they got me into the ambulance i didn't see my friend anymore i don't know if they like took her somewhere or something because i i didn't know where she was anymore um they separated us and i remember they put me into the ambulance and from there um they were checking my vitals they were checking if i was okay i was i remember i opened my knee i opened like a little bit of my knee i have like a little scar i'll post a picture right here so you guys can see um and i was just waiting there i guess for them to just finish what they were doing and i remember the doors opened from the ambulance they opened the back doors opened and it was my mom guys kid you not when i saw my mom i started bawling my eyes out i was like Ama, sacame de aquí. i was like i do not want to be in here she's like how she's like you can't even move like she's like look at your legs she's like they need to go stitch it up like just stay in there because i also had a neck brace on um that they put on me and i just remember i started crying i was like mom mom and she's like donde esta la seguranza donde esta la seguranza i was like mom like i just got in a car accident and she's like donde esta la seguranza que la policía está preguntando and i was like pues ahí está mami donde se ponen todos los papeles you know it should be there and the guy from the ambulance is like okay we need to take her because her oxygen is low and we need to get her to the hospital right away gladly the hospital was like 10 minutes away from where i crashed so they took me to the hospital. I remember I was crying. I was freaking out because I was like, you know, I'm alone in here. Like, what am I doing? You know, like, please, like, take me home. You know, where's my friend? Where did she go? So then I remember um, we got to the hospital 
and they took me into the room and they started to check me put medicine through the ivs they, they did the whole thing guys i was literally that bad i didn't know i was that bad till we got to the hospital and they started doing everything on me um i didn't know that i was very you know in that really critical stage i thought i was fine till i started seeing everything that they were doing and you know it took them a while to get me calmed down to get you know because i was freaking out i was freaking out because i wanted my mom yo quería mi mamá yo no quería estar ahí sola you know i was alone yo no sabía dónde estaba y me acuerdo que pues me dejaron me dieron medicina para calmarme through my iv y en ese momento le hablé a mi best friend sorry mom um, le hablé porque pues ella siempre estuvo ha estado ahí conmigo en todo y le hablé and i was like hey um, I just got an accident. I got I FaceTime her. I remember I FaceTime her and when she told me she was like, Oh my god, like what happened? I was like, I just got in a really bad car accident. Um she was just freaking out when she saw me. I just told her what happened. Hey, I just got in a car accident. I feel alone. Can you please stay on FaceTime with me? She's like, Si, sí, yo me estoy en FaceTime contigo. So then, ya pasaron unas horas y me dijo el doctor, you know what? I need to stitch up your knee because um, it looks really bad. And I'm going to take x-rays to see how your lungs are doing. Not only that, but to see if you broke any bones. So they did the whole CT scans. They did the whole x-rays. They did everything, everything, everything in that moment. When I, they put me back in the room after doing all the x-rays, my mom came. I was relieved, guys. I was like, oh my God, ya llegó mi mamá. Ya no voy a estar sola. And was with my mom as well. And I kept asking her. I was like, oh my God, are you okay? I am sorry, you know. I didn't know this was going to happen. And she was like, no, it's okay, it's okay. Just my hand hurts a little. And I was like, you know what? You need to tell the nurses that your hands hurt, but get, what if it's broken or something? And she didn't want to. I think she was just worried more about me, about you know if i was okay because i was the one that got hit the most and then in that in that moment when the thought when they walked in and they were talking to me like probably two minutes later the um, doctor comes in and says i need to stitch up your knee guys i never gotten stitches in my life that was the first time i ever got in stitches call me a crybaby call me whatever you want but that hurt especially in the knee feeling that needle going straight into my knee guys I cried I yelled and after that I didn't even feel the stitches but just the moment that they were numbing me, eso sí me dolió. I, I still can feel the pain in my knee I can still feel the needle going through even talking about it now like I can still feel it you know so yeah they stitched me up and I remember right after they stitched me up the doctor was like okay I'm just gonna get people work together you're good you know to be discharged if anything just come back you know the whole nine yards that they give you I'm gonna have a nurse come in and you know check you one more time before you leave and I was like okay go ahead you know so I remember the nurse came in and um they were like okay we're gonna get you up so when they were getting me up guys they wanted me to walk and I literally felt like I was gonna faint I told the nurse, like, I'm going to faint. I feel like I'm going to faint. And when they got me up, guys, kid you not, my mom says that my whole face hit me so bien pálida. Y they had to sit me down right away because, like I said, and I told the nurse, me voy a desmayar. So then um, they waited a little bit, and then I got up again, and I told them, you know what? It hurts to walk. I feel like my body is very weak. They're like, okay, we're going to bring you crutches. And I think I still have a picture of me being in crutches. I don't really, I need to find it, but I think I do still have that picture. And I remember my friend was like, my hand still hurts. And I told the nurse, I was like, you know what, dude, I don't care. I'm telling the nurse, you know, um, this is my fault that this happened. And I'm going to make sure that, you know, you get checked before we go. So yeah, they checked her, her hand was not broken, her hand was fine, and my mom took us home. And I told my mom, you know, what happened to my car? She's like, well, I got total, like, it's not gonna work anymore, it's not gonna be the same anymore. Guys, I was so heartbroken because I was the first car my dad ever gave me, the first car for my graduation, you know, it was a present that he gave me, a present that he worked really, really hard, and you know, I cried, I cried, I was like, but that's my first car, like, my mom was like, las cosas materiales van y vienen y no un día vas a tener algo más, algo mejor, vas a ver. She's like, this is un tropezo nada más en la vida. And I kept telling my mom, like, mom, I'm sorry, I got in a car accident. She's like, it happens, you know, everybody gets into car accidents. 
So, you know, we were driving home and she's like, no te quiero preocupar, pero te voy a decir que la aseguranza no se encontró. Yo no sé dónde pusiste la aseguranza, pero um, aquí está el papel y te van a mandar a corte. I was like, no, pues está bien, you know, I'll go show proof at the, at the courts that I did have insurance at the time. And, I mean, if they couldn't find the paper, you know, pues ya ni modo, you know, it was probably hectic by the time my mom got there. And she was probably freaking out because, you know, it was just a recent car accident. It was literally like three minutes away from home. So I remember I got home and me and my friend laid down on the bed. She's like, hey dude, you know, I called my mom to come pick me up in the morning. I want to see my son. And I was like, you know what? Remember when I told you about this guy coming up to me and telling me about I was going to get in a car accident and que alguien, alguien me hizo brujería? I was like, I think I do believe him. Because at the moment when I hit guys, I, you know, I know I said I like, me this me this vehicle like like i couldn't i didn't i don't remember exactly remember i saw a black shadow a black shadow when i hit and i told her i was like you know what i saw a black shadow when i hit and you know i really don't believe in this brujeria stuff but you know i do believe it now like it was that much that i had to believe it you know and people might say you know you just put that in your head so you know you can have this car accident and stuff guys i've been i've I started driving when I was 16. This car accident I had when I was 19. I was always a safe driver. I was always looking. I was always, you know, I always saw the road, I, everything, you know. I've been I've been driving. I was driving for a very, very good time, you know. And it was so weird for me that I don't know where I got in a car accident. So, you know, after that, um, you know, we went to sleep. And we woke up and she went home. And then, you know, my dad, he wasn't, um, he came in the morning to come see how I was. My mom and my dad aren't together, they're divorced. So my dad came in the morning and I told him, I was like, can you please take me to go see my car? I was like, I wanna go see it. He's like, yeah, I'll go to, I'll take you. So he took me and when I got there guys, I started crying even more. I started crying even more because it was a present that my dad gave me. <laughs> it was a present that my dad gave me it was something that i should have taken care of and i feel like i did it and my dad was like you know what he said the same thing my mom said Son cosas materiales, van y vienen. you know you don't have to worry about it so you know we had to pay the place where they totaled the car the towing fee we had to pay um, what else did we pay? I forgot what we paid, but we paid a very good amount of money. And I remember I had to hand over the title of the car, and that was it. It was, you know, it was done with. I remember I took out all my stuff, you know, my speaker from the sound system that I had in there. And I was so sad, guys. I was devastated. I was so devastated that I couldn't have my vehicle back. Something that would, you know, because I was going to school at that time, something that would take me to school and from. I was so devastated. I remember on our way back home, I was crying. I was, again, I was telling my dad, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about everything, I'm sorry about the car. And he was like, it's okay, it's okay, you know, it happens. And never again am I, you know, after that, I believed in brujería so much, guys, because that just hits, you know, brujería is real. People do do brujería on people. And I never believed that these people would do that to me, you know, that for me to get in a car accident for things to go bad. But I know that God was on my side in the when I was at the car accident. I know that he wasn't, you know, going to take away my life that way. You know, he's like, I ain't done with you on earth. So you stay in. But yeah, guys, I remember I was in. I used my crutches only probably like three days. And then I started, you know, walking again on my own. But after that guys my body hurt so bad i felt so sore i had bruises everywhere in my body i remember i was so sad because i didn't have my car i was bruised up i felt alone it was it sucked it really really sucked um you know car accidents aren't a joke the aftermath of the of the car accident is bad it just sucks really really bad so yeah guys, so this is my story time of when I got in a car accident and it was brujería. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, 
and go ahead and click on the bell notification so when i do post a video you are notified